Hey guys, it's Tracy Lynn from DeclutterInMinutes.com with another organizing inspirational video just for you. Okay, today we are going to talk about how to set up a portable crafting area in your home because let's face it, not everybody has enough room in their house to dedicate an entire room to crafting or sewing or painting or woodworking. Not everybody has the space for that. So I got a couple requests from people asking for a few um, different and unique ways to set up crafting areas in a home so that you can get in, grab your supplies and take them with you to work on projects. Or you could work right there in that um, small set up organized space. So I scoured the internet looking for different ideas and I came up with some really great ones and I'm going to share those ideas with you today. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. How to set up a craft space in your home. First thing that you want to do when setting up a crafting area is you want to walk around the house and really take a look at all the space that you have available. And I'm not just talking looking at rooms that um, you may not be using routinely. I'm talking about all of the spaces. I want you to look in the attic. I want you to look in the basement if you have one. I want you to look um, in the corner of a guest bedroom. I want you to look in a closet in storage areas in the corner of a family room. I want you to look in all of the spaces because my goal is to help you think outside of the box. What may look at what may look like just the other side of a door is actually the perfect spot for you to set up an organized area for all of your crafting supplies, which what might look like just a space underneath of a guest bedroom bed is actually a great place for you to put a tote or a foldable table or um, an organizing system for all of your crafting supplies so you can pull it out and get working whenever you feel the need. I want you to see, see things differently. I want you to look at things in a different way so that you can find a unique way to set up a space that is all for you. So the very first thing you want to do is figure out where is the best location. You can use, um, you could keep it portable, meaning you can use those carts on the wheels. And we're going to look at a couple of examples. And you can keep all of your supplies on a rollaway cart and then bring the cart to you wherever it is that you want to work. If you have a big project and you want to spread out on the dining room table, you can roll your cart into the dining room. If you have a small project and you just want to work in your easy chair while you're watching a movie with your family, you can roll that cart right into the family room. The purpose is to create a system that works best for you. And that will, and by keeping it mobile, you could do it for a painting um, area, for painting supplies. You could do it for crafting. You could do it for sewing, whatever works for you. When you first start out, I want you to really look at your home as you decide on what's the best location. And the first thing that you can do is if you don't really have a space where you can make all your own as a crafting area, maybe you would like to keep it mobile. And those organizing cards that they have right now, for the kitchen and for other areas of the home work great as portable portable crafting stations put all your supplies on the cart i'm going to show you a couple examples and then you could take your supplies to wherever it is you want to work so if it's a large project and you want to spread out on the dining room table for a week or so roll your cart over there and you have all your supplies ready to go if it is a small project then maybe roll your cart next to your easy chair in the family room Whatever it is, the portable option is a great way to really allow you to do things wherever you feel is the best for you at that time. I also want you to look at the doors. I talked about this briefly earlier, but doors are a hidden storage gem inside of a home. The back area of a door, you could put a hanger on and put all of your organized or your crafting supplies in that. You can install a pegboard on the back of a door and you can make a full organized area for your crafting supplies and for your tools and for your scissors and other items. You can even use your door to set up a private area in, an, in a guest bedroom or another space that gives you a little bit of seclusion and sections off a crafting space. There are really all kinds of options and doors are a hidden gem that I wanted to point out. You can also use a closet. I found some really great examples I'm going to show you in a bit 
on how to create a craft room inside of a closet that you may not be using the best way. You might just be throwing stuff into a closet for now, and this will give you an exact purpose for that space so you can turn it into an area you love to be in. And then finally, think about cabinets. This could be an armoire. This could be a china cabinet, uh, a buffet, even a kitchen cabinet in your kitchen. You can use um, a section on your desk. You could use a coffee table in your family room. You just need a space to house your crafting or sewing or painting supplies so that when you are ready to work for a project, you only have to go to one area to get all of your tools out and ready to go. Okay, let's start with those portable carts. Remember when you have a cart that's on wheels, it allows you to take your supplies anywhere that you want to work. This is from feelingnifty.com and she really found a cart that was customizable. There's pegboard on the one side, which adds all this extra storage space. She's got the three cubbies on top. She's got the back area for, this could be for um, material rolls. This could be for fusible fabric. This could be for wrapping paper or crafting paper. And you can really make this cart hold so much more than you might originally think that it can hold. You can also use a cart and then use containers that you have to keep things organized inside. Here they use mason jars and pretty bowls. And this is from the craftingchicks.com. And I encourage you to go check their set out because they have some really great organizing ideas for the craft room. This solution I really wanted to share with you because so many times we buy these dishes that are just so beautiful that we don't want to use them to serve food in, but not everybody wants to hang all these dishes on their wall. This gives you an option by using those pretty bowls and serving platters. You can double them as storage and get them out. And what do they do? They double as art in your home. So really open up that possibility of seeing your containers in a different light and maybe use them in a way that's specific and unique to what it is you need to use them for. Now let's move on to pegboards, you guys. This might be one of my favorite organizing tools ever and something that I'm going to start utilizing throughout my home. You can find an out of the way wall in your home, install a pegboard and store things vertically all the way to the ceiling. Even if it's super high up, you can get a really cute step stool and really take advantage of all of that space. This is perfect in a guest bedroom behind a door. You could keep all of your stuff organized and sorted and out where you can see it. This is from a girl in a glue gun.com. She also has a great site. I wanted, want to encourage you to go check out with some really neat ideas. The reason why I liked her pegboard is because she made it fun. She's got her personality on there. She's got not only organizers and all different kinds of organizers, but she's got decorations on there as well. You don't have to be all business. You can absolutely be fun. And these pegboards are so versatile that you can literally use them just about anywhere. If you use hooks, you can use shelves and other unique hangers, giving things that you might have stored right now as clutter, giving them second life in an organizational system such as this. So she's got a plant holder on there that she actually has a fake plant in, but you can use that to hold markers and scissors and, and writing utensils. She's got um, a chalkboard on there. She's got a clipboard on there. Oh my gosh, you guys. Sorry about that. I love clipboards. They're so awesome and so versatile. You can put a checklist of uh, craft projects that you need to get done in a certain amount of time. You can put um, a list of who you're making those craft projects for and possibly a deadline on there so you remember when to get things done. If you don't have clipboards, you can use those binder clips and hook them on your pegboard and you could do small notes and reminders and even instructions for a current craft project that you are working on. This is from spoonfulofsugar.com. You can also customize the pegboard sizes so they fit wherever it is you have room. So somethingturquoise.com, she has a big pegboard for all of her tools and then she has that really skinny pegboard for all of her threads. I really wanted to share this option with you because it helps you to see that you can cut and size these pegboards to really fit any space inside of your home. And it just opens up a whole nother level of organizing that you may not even be aware of that was available to you. 
Okay. Closet craft rooms. Oh my gosh, you guys talk about a game changer. If you're in an older home, I'm sure you have all of these small closets and really aren't quite sure what to do with them. I'm going to give you an idea right now. Set up a crafting area inside of your closet. Go ahead and keep the hanging rod in there and use those pant hangers to hold materials, crafting paper. Um, you can do patterns for sewing projects. Use that top shelf to store anything that you do not routinely use. And the items that you use often, keep those down in prime real estate, meaning you can reach them without having to get a stool or a chair. Um, really utilize all the space. I don't have the picture on here, but you can also do the inside of the closet doors, hang a peg pegboard or an over the door organizer. And that gives you even two more areas to store so many more supplies for your crafting. This is from dbcampus.blogspot.com. You can also use your uh, closet just to store your craft supplies. Now this is that over the door organizer I was telling you about. There is so much space in one of these organizers. They're super inexpensive. They're extremely durable. Do not go to the dollar store for this. You need it to be um, strong enough to hold the heaviness of the supplies that you are putting inside so that you don't compromise and possibly risk things falling and breaking. But you could put your scissors in one, your cutting tools in another, your stamps in one, your die cuts in one. You could put stickers in there, gift bags for presents, scrap pieces of paper, labels for organizing projects. Guys, you could do anything you want. And then, bonus tip, get yourself a good sturdy large basket or a tote that you can hang right on the handle of the door. And whenever you're getting ready to work a new project, go into your storage closet and shop your supplies. Gather everything you need for the project you're going to work on, and then you can go find a workspace on a portable table, dining room table, kitchen table, whatever it is, and you could spread out and get to work and leave the rest of the supplies put away and out of the way. It's really a great way to keep things organized. And this is from blesserhouse.com. Even a small closet can give you big space. I love this closet from epbot.com e because they took out all of the closet supplies and turned it into a streamlined space, really capitalizing on the vertical storage that was available. So they made these U shelves. They wrap around the inside of the closet and almost triples the storage area that is available. They even have room to put a desk inside of there, which I love as well. And again, anything you do not use frequently, you want to keep that up high. And the stuff that you do use all the time, keep that down low. Next, you can remove the doors to give yourself even more space. This is from iHeartOrganizing.com. Again, another great site to check out. She really likes to put her personality into organizing projects, which I absolutely love. With this gold polka dotted wallpaper, it really does make this area fun. And then she matches the labels to the wallpaper itself. She hangs curtains so it gives the illusion of a door, but frees up so much space so that she can really take advantage of everything that's available. You can also remove the doors, not put a curtain on it, and do an extension of the room that you have the closet in. And by painting the inside of the closet, it really does make it feel like it's just another part of the room. I love this idea. This is from beneathmyheart.net because I love that the pegboard is painted. It, it, it gives it a different zone inside of that closet. There's fun lighting that I'm assuming matches the decor of the room and other organizers that she brought in that are also functional yet aesthetically pleasing to her and her style. Now we are going to talk about converting a cabinet into a crafting space. You can purchase a cabinet that is made specifically for crafting. So many manufacturers realize that crafting is what a lot of us like to do, but we don't all have room for it. So they sell these crafting cabinets that you can purchase and store all of your craft supplies in. They're really great and fun to have around, but they are a little bit pricey. So in case this is not in your budget, this is from the happyhousey.porch.com. I have a few audit item I have a few ideas that you can use to convert and DIY a cabinet into a crafting cabinet, just like this one. 
This is an antique. This is an armoire. I absolutely love this. It's so much fun. They painted it pink and just shoved it full of all their crafting supplies. They took advantage of all the space from the floor to the ceiling. They took advantage of the inside of the doors and really made sure that everything was in there that they needed. These cabinets really do hold a lot more than you might first realize. And if you organize things in a vertical and um, horizontal way, it really does allow you to get a lot in there. This is in my own style.com. Just a tip that I want to share with you quickly is if you're going to use the inside of the doors as organizing space, you want to test and make sure the doors will close completely with the organizers on them because if not you're not going to be able to shut the door so always test before you drill and attach you can also turn a cabinet into a full craft station um dearest sultana i think is how you say it dot wordpress.com took an old cabinet and actually put a, a table inside that pulls out this way everything's enclosed in this one cabinet I love that she put corkboard on the one side to hold projects and samples of patterns and inspirational photos. But I also love that she used an over the door organizer to hold her ironing board for pressing patterns and other sewing projects. This is such a great way to really utilize all the space that is available inside of a cabinet. You can also purchase battery operated overhead lighting to put inside of your cabinet just to give you some extra um, help in the lighting department if you're working on a project that you need to see with. Do not think that those batteries are going to wear out quickly. They, they last a surprisingly long time and I use them quite often myself and they work great. All right. My favorite thing. I know I say that a lot, but I really do mean it. I love organizers that double as art. And what I mean by that is when you could take an organizer and have it match the room, it looks like a piece of art when you have it out and in use. So instead of just hanging a regular old white paperboard, why don't you paint it to match the decor of the room? When you do this, it takes a regular pegboard and turns it into another piece of art inside of the room. And it's a genius way to allow you to use that vertical storage and create a crafting area in a family room, in a dining room, in an office, even in a bedroom. You don't need a lot of space to get your favorite tools and pieces up where you need them. And if you put that pegboard next to a dresser or another piece of furniture, just like that, you have a flat surface to work on a project right in that same space. And this is from fireflystoresolutions.com. If you add a frame, you guys, you can really style up a piece of pegboard. This is from honeybearlane.com. And I love the fact that she put a frame inside of a frame because this to me looks like a pegboard that is sorted into areas or work areas so that when she's working on a project, everything's in the same place. So if she's painting, she has her paint zone. If she's sewing, she has her threads in the middle and her scissors below. That's her sewing zone. And if she's working on other paper projects, she has her paper products on the right and on the left. And that's her paper zone. By organizing inside of the pegboard itself, you really up your um, crafting area to a really streamlined space. I know this picture is blurry, but I wanted to add it because she used, she painted her pegboard blue, put on a pink frame, and then used pink rosettes to really style it up so she could put it into the room. And it's right above a dresser, which was her workstation. This is from bydonnicole.com. And I love the fact that she's got shelving on her pegboard. I think it's genius and it is such a great way to really take advantage of all the space you have available. Go all out and use a colored pegboard and a frame and go vertical. Really use all the space you have available. This is from the 36th avenue.com. Again, a great site with some more great ideas that I want you to check out. This one's all business. This There's not a lot pretty about this, but it still doubles as art because of the frame and the color to match the room. But it's all 
you know, business tools. You've got cutters, you've got nail or uh, little mallets, you've got your scissors, your punches, your duct tape um, baskets to hold smaller items. And even though the pegboard itself isn't pretty, the style of the pegboard still constitutes as a piece of art. Remember, you guys, your home, your rules. You can set things up any way you like. Okay, before I cut you loose, a couple things to remember. First, where is there enough space to store my supplies? I want you to walk your home, look up, look down, look in every single room and space. Close the door and look at the room. Open up the closet and check things out. Really think outside of the box when you're trying to find an area to put a portable crafting station. Is there enough lighting? Once you choose a space, make sure that you have enough lighting to actually work on your crafting project. If not, is that something that you can ha add in or you can have someone add in for you? Is there room to spread out and work? And if not, can you add a table? Portable tables are so inexpensive right now. I think it was at Walmart and you could get them for like $36. They're super small when they fold down. They'll fit in a closet. They'll fit under a bed. They'll even lean up against the wall without taking up too much space. They really are a great way for you to get a project out and work on it without tearing an entire room apart. And then finally, what can I use to contain my supplies in a way, oops, typo, I love use containers get those pretty bowls out that you purchased when you were in mexico and use them and see them and love the sight of them get an old base out that you may not have used for years and put your pens and markers and everything inside get those um those mason jars out you really utilize the stuff that you have and add a bit of character to any area that you're organizing inside of your home all right, you guys, I hope you found some fun organizing ideas for setting up a portable crafting area in your home. Try some from one idea, marry it in with some other ideas and create a system that works for you. Test something out, see if it works. If it doesn't, take a step back, tweak it, change locations, move things around, try another option. It's not always going to work the first time. Sometimes you have to test things out, try them on and see if they fit. And if not, go back to the drawing board and try something again. All right, guys, that's the end of today's organizing inspiration. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.